Hello, um, welcome to our presentation on plastic pollution in Midwest waterfowl. I'm Mia Lockanese, presenting today with me is Clarissa Moore. We also have our co-authors, Allison Marcus and Carolyn Boss, who aren't able to make with us today. Um, we also have our advisor, Dr. Jennifer Sweatman. So it's kind of an introduction to our project. Um, studies on microplastics have shown that there are detrimental, detrimental effects to the various organisms that come in contact with them. Um, a microplastic is defined as a plastic that's less than five millimeters in length. Um, that happens because plastic never fully biodegrades and breaks down to its chemical components. Therefore, it just keeps breaking down into smaller and smaller pieces. Um, to even further narrow it down, there has been even little study in freshwater environments and then even less study on freshwater waterfowl. Um, so the goal of this research um, was to study if there is a significant difference between the amount of microplastics based on the feeding habits of Midwestern waterfowl, between dabbling birds, which usually eat on the surface, and diving birds that usually dive down to get their food. Um, our hypothesis was that um, the, dabbling, the dabbling birds would have a higher level of microplastics because the microplastics are buoyant enough that they would stay on the surface where they could be consumed, as opposed to um, lower below the water where the diving birds would eat them. So the methods for our research, um, we were lucky enough to be donated uh, lots of samples of the digestive tracts um, of waterfowl um, from local hunters in the Minnesota, North Dakota area. Um, so what we did was we took the digestive organs, the proventriculus, the gizzard, and the intestines, uh, and we separated those. Um, so from there, we cut open each organ individually, washed them in a 500 micron sieve, and then we took the digestive contents from the sieve we looked at those contents under a dissecting microscope first, and we pulled out any material that appeared to be anthropogenic. And then we observed that anthropogenic material under a compound microscope um, to see, to affirm if they were microplastics. And we also went through the digestive contents in general under the compound microscope to find any very small microplastics. So we classified our microplastics based on criteria set up by Holland et al. in 2016. We classified things as anthropogenic if we found no visible cellular structures, uh, any fiber sound were non-tapered and of uniform thickness, colored material was of uniform color and a natural hue. And then some, so from there, what we did was we organized and we counted those microplastics and separated our numbers based on feeding habits. So the results of our research, uh, we had a total of 22 samples that we studied, six divers and 16 dabblers. Within the diving ducks, we found an average of 14.7 microplastics per bird, and we found an average of 23.3 microplastics. Uh, if you look in the bottom left corner, you can see that distribution of the plastics that we found. We performed a Kruskal Wallace rank sum test to see if there was a significant difference between the number of microplastics found between feeding types. So we ended up finding a p-value of 0.2374. And we found that to be not significant at our alpha value of 0.05. So as Clarissa just said, um, our p-value was found, with, found to be not significant um, between the two different feeding habits. However, what was important is that every bird was found to contain some amount of microplastics. Um, the study was the first one to provide data on microplastics on freshwater birds, more specifically looking at how feeding habits and accumulation of microplastics are connected. So this research affirms that microplastics have made their way even to rural um, bodies of water and that they are becoming a, a conservation issue for waterfowl. We are currently conducting um, research utilizing a larger and more even sample sizes between the two feeding habits and then looking at a greater variety of species to draw conclusions um, that can be shown even to, that can be having broader results, broader um, significance. Thank you for coming to our presentation and have a nice day.